So here is what a sphere looks like drawn on a two-dimensional shape. It, hopefully you get the idea. It looks like a circle, but then we have kind of a circular diameter here, and we're given that the radius here from the center of the sphere to the edge is two centimeters. Now, I'm just going to tell you that the surface area of any sphere is 4 times pi times r squared. Now, this is not something I can actually prove to you right now. Now, you know uh, uh, that pi r squared has a meaning, right? Ra this is the radius here of the cross-sectional diameter. This is a, a circle that, that, if you slice through it, has a radius of 2. And so pi r squared is the surface area of the slice that goes through the center of the sphere. So when you read it like that, you say, well, okay, that's the area of a slice through the diameter or the equator of a sphere. And you take whatever that area is and you multiply it by four. So this is the area of a slice through. When we multiply by four, that then is a kind of a conversion factor that converts it into the area around, not just around the edge, but around the entire surface of the thing. So you might say, well, why is it four times that? Why isn't it three times that? Or six times that? Or two thirds times that? I mean, that comes from calculus, really. I can't explain it right now because we learn in calculus how to find area and volume of complex shapes. Uh, and we learn how to prove things like this. Unfortunately, at this level, I can't prove it to you. But I can just say that this is the cross-sectional diameter, the, the area of, of that circle as you slice through the center of a uh, of a circle of a sphere, and then if you take that area multiply by four, it works out to be exactly the surface area of the outside. And when you get into further classes down the road, we will prove this to be true. But for now, we want to use this fact to find the surface area of a sphere that has a radius from the center to the edge of two centimeters. So the area is always four times pi times r squared. Right, so it's four times three point one four. That's rounded, and the radius is two, so it's two squared. So that means that it's four times three point one four, and then two squared is four. Now, if you just multiply these three numbers together, four times three point one four times four, the area that you get is fifty point two four two four. Now, the units that we're working with are in centimeters because that's the distance of the radius there. So this is an area, so it's square centimeters. So 50.24, 50, 50 decimal 24 centimeters squared. All right. Um, and this means that if I had the sphere in front of me and drew little squares, each of the square was a centimeter on each side, and I just spent the whole day drawing all those little squares, of a circle or a sphere of this size, I would have just a little bit more than 50 of them. I'd have 50 and about a quarter of another uh, square centimeter that would fit on the surface there. All right, let's get some more practice with solving problem number two. Again, same story, different days. This is a sphere with a radius from the center to the edge of five. So the area is four times pi r squared. So it's 4 times 3.14 times the radius, which is 5, but that 5 is squared. So it's going to be 4 times 3.14. 5 times 5 is 25. Now, if you take the 25 times the 4, that's 100. And 100 times this, I think you can convince yourself, works out to 314 exactly, just moving the decimal two spots. And the units are in millimeters, so, th so this is going to be in square millimeters. So I'll put 314 square millimeters, right? That would fit on the surface there. All right, let's move along to problem number three, sphere with a radius of seven. So the area here, surface area, is four pi r squared. So this area is four times 3.14 times the radius squared. The radius is seven, so seven squared. And so the area that we get, 4 times 3.14, 7 times 7, whoops, is 49, like this. All right? And so when you take 4 times 3.14 times, let me just double check, uh, 49, what you get is 615 period 44. And the units were meters, so this has got to be square meters because it's area. So 615 decimal 44, and this is square meters. All right, we have one more. We'll conquer our last problem. All right, here's our last problem. We have a sphere, but the radius is a weird number. It's three times the square root of two. First of all, I don't want you to get scared or worried when you see numbers written like that. Uh, if you dump that in a calculator, if you take a square root of two, you get about 1.4 times three, you'll get some decimal. 
you know, which will be some, some decimal value, right? It's just a decimal value. When you have a radical there, it's just an exact value for some decimal, right? Because that square root of two goes on and on and on forever. So the square root of two is just a number like anything else, but the decimals never end. And so if you take that and multiply it by three and truncate the decimals, then you have some approximation here. So we're just making a sphere with this exact value in millimeters. And we wanna find its surface area. So again, as always, four pi r squared. So what do we have? We have four times pi 3.14, and the radius is uh, three times the square root of two, and that is squared. Now, the only thing that you really have to do here is when you have a square applying to, in this case, we have two things multiplied together, then this exponent from the rules of exponents, it, it bombs in and applies itself to both of the interior terms there. So what we basically have here is we're gonna have four times 3.14. Then three squared will be here. And then we'll have the square root of two squared. You see, all I've done is I've applied the square to this and I've applied the square to this. And the next step, we'll uh, you know, flesh it out a little bit, 3.14. Then three squared is nine. And what is the square root of two squared? Well, the square root cancels the square, so you just have two left over. So this essentially becomes 18 times four times this. So when you take four times 3.14 times nine times two, the area works out to be two, two, six decimal, zero, eight. And the units in this problem were millimeters, so this is millimeters squared. So two, two, six decimal, zero, eight millimeters squared, or square millimeters. So you see how important it is to have prior skills. If I give you this problem with a square root of two in the radius like this, and you don't know how to handle the rules of exponents and also how to handle radicals, then you have no idea what to do. Everything builds, you see? And we know when we go to the step that it's two things multiplied and it has an exponent. So we know the exponent applies to both. That is a rule of exponents that you have to know. And then you have to know that when you have the square root and a square, they kind of cancel each other and, and they reveal only what's on the inside. That's a separate thing that we've learned based on studying radical square roots and cube roots and things like that. Those are two separate skills that we're basically applying in this problem. So that's why it's important to go in order in math and master everything. So when you get to something like this, it's not like, it's not like a new rule. Some students will look at this and say, oh, it's some new rule. No, it's the same rules. We just have to learn them in sequence. So solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue working with the surface area of a sphere. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.